glad to be here this morning. It's a, it's a great privilege to come before you with the Word of God, and I'm going to tell you that I'm, I'm not an educated preacher. I, I, I didn't go to a, a school to learn to preach. I don't believe that, I don't, that's right, brother, I don't believe there was ever a man that, that learned to preach, you got to be taught into the, and, and I believe every, I believe probably every ministry in here would say that they didn't get into it for the glory of it, they didn't get into it for the money, uh, they didn't get into it for people to lift them up, if they did, then they missed the call. I believe that the calling of the Lord is without repentance also. I believe that God calls men into the ministry to preach the Word. And I'm going to get to my message in a minute. I'm going to take you over to Matthew chapter 23 and verse 23 if you want to go there with me. And I, something that's, uh, that has been burdening me for a long time, and I'm going to start out by telling you a funny story. Uh, I was listening to a guy the other day. He said he's a comedian. He, he, he's a good singer, but he uh, he gets people into what he's doing, and, and he does uh, present the gospel very well by those means, and that's great. I'm glad. Uh, but he was talking about that they, where he went to church, been a member a long time. His whole family been a member there, and uh, their preacher was getting real, real low. But he still loved to preach. And he said one day, he died toad frog dead standing in the pool. And uh, he said, so they got a committee together. You know, as Baptists, we committee things. We got a committee things, you know. Uh, and, and so they got a committee together, and they went out, and they got to city. He said they went got, went and got a young man. He said they got him straight out of cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, he was referring to, to, to being educated preachers, and, and that's okay. I, I think a man needs to have an education now to be able to reach people. Uh, but he also has to be called to reach people. But anyway, he said that he started preaching that they would have to go through the tribulation. And he said, now me and my family didn't want to go through the tribulation. He said, so we got mad, we went across the road in that church where they didn't have to go through the tribulation. <laughs> and he said, if those people on the other side of the road knew what we knew, they wouldn't have to go through the tribulation. <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of, and, and Brother Joey, and I made me think about this this morning, was talking about teaching the book of Revelation. And no matter who teaches it, you always come up with something new, something that maybe... Uh, somebody else don't know or don't agree with, and we all have opinions of it. With, but, but you know, I think the basics of the Bible everyone understands, and that's what I'm trying to say. But anyway, in, in Matthew 23 and, and, and verse 23, he said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Now, Jesus wasn't, he and the, and the scribes and Pharisees didn't get along too good. And the scribes and Pharisees basically adhered to the law of Moses. And they were, uh, you know, the Pharisees, handled the law and the scribes wrote it down and a lot of times they were at odds at each other. Uh, reminds me of another story where a man said he'd been shipwrecked and he was the only one on that island and he'd been there so long he built him a real nice church and a real nice home and one day the, the, the ship rescued him and, and they asked him, he said, who built that church? He said, I did. And they said, boy, that's beautiful. And he said, well, who built that house? He said, I did. He said, man, that's great. He said, well, who built this other church over here? It's gorgeous, too. He said, I built that. I couldn't get along with a pastor in the other one. <laughs> you know, we we right. all have our ideas, don't we? Right. And, and people get, but you know, when, when Jesus gave a judgment, he gave a righteous judgment. And he gave it in the truth out of God's Word. Yeah. And when he called them hypocrites, he told them, he said, 
part of the law of Moses, you do. You know, he said the things where you're giving tithes of anise and cumin and mint, and he said, that's great. You, you should do that. But he said, you're omitting the weightier matters of the law when it comes to judgment and mercy and faith. He said, it's good that you do the other, but you shouldn't leave this undone either. You see, we as humans love to pick and choose the Bible. What fits good in our lives and what fits in that little empty place we have and fits real good, but we don't want to get anything out of our life that I think we want to, you know, some of the things that really are offensive to us, we don't want. It bothers us when we have to give up something. Yeah. And and so what I'm trying to get to today is we need to live godly. We need to live according to God's law. Now, I'm not going to go back to Moses' law. That was entirely different. Although God gave him the law to live by, they went on and they began to stretch things a little bit. They began to add all of these other things that Moses, uh, they decided that they needed to add. And, all the, and you know what? They chose the things that they could do. They chose the things that was easier for them. And, and when it got hard for them to keep that part, like uh, keeping the Sabbath, they said you can just go so far on the Sabbath. They decided, well, if we're going to, if it's hard for us to keep that, uh, what we do is we tell them they can't travel so far from their home, so we're going to go that far, and then that little place there is going to be our home, and we can go farther then. Yeah. You see, we cannot stretch the law to make it fit our needs. Right. We need to make us fit the law of God and the Word of God. And he told me, he said, you guys have become hypocrites. You may have started out right. You may have been given the law, but you begin to take out the parts that didn't fit good for you, and you didn't preach it, because when you preach that against uh, what God's Word says, and you don't care if you're preaching against yourself. We've got people today standing in the pulpit. I'm, now, I'm not going to pick any man out, and I'm not thinking about any church or any denomination. I'm not doing that. I'm trying to make you aware today that the personal relationship you have with God may be different than mine. <coughs> you know, you may have to pray more than I do. I may have to pray more than you do. But we can't, either one of us cannot omit prayer because it's our duty to pray for others, to pray for ourselves, to pray for our nation, to pray for our preachers and our Sunday school teachers. Prayer is how we talk to God. Amen. And the Spirit will carry that prayer and God will send an answer back. That's right. Now, he told him, he said, uh, you, you begin to do these things, you started out right, and then you, you begin to falter, and we have sent prophets to tell you what you needed to do, and you ignored them. You thought, well, that don't fit my agenda. That don't make my church grow. That don't make me feel good. But you see, friend, I'm not in this for me to feel good. I'm not in here to make you feel good. If you feel good, it's because you're living the way you should and God's Word is speaking to you. If you don't feel well and I'm handling the Word the way I should, it's because you are living the way you should. If I tell you about judgment, you don't want to hear that? It's not my problem. That's your problem. If I talk to you about mercy and you don't want to give mercy, that's not my problem. That's your problem. If I talk to you about faith and you don't have faith, that's not my problem. That's your problem. And it's not a problem until you refuse to listen to God. God sends you people to tell you about the Word. He sends them to preach to me. Amen. Preachers need preaching too. Amen. We falter. We get guilty of these things. Yeah. We're not perfect. We're men and women just like you are. Amen. And we need somebody to tell us. Now, one time, I, I never will forget this. I preached a scathing message one day again, about the, to the church about how the people should and shouldn't live. And everything I said, boy, just raked the hide off me. And when I got through and gave an altar call, I thought, you know what? I better go to you. <laughs> through this 
this message. And I said, God, why would you have me preach a message like that? And he hit me. He said, because you won't listen to the people I said. So I just have to tell you, from you, we sometimes forget what God tells us to do. Oh, I don't want them to step on my toes. When I go to church, I want to feel good. So I can go out in the world and feel good. You see, I need to remind you that the world is not where we get to feeling good. That's right. And if people and ministers are preaching the Word of God to become some big name preacher, you've lost your calling. Amen. See, it would be great. And I've preached before hundreds of people before. Thousands of people. I've been on TV. But I'm not bragging about that. I'm glad God gave me the ability. Yeah. But I didn't get in there and say, you need to listen to old brother John. You need to listen to the Word of God. Hey, That's what I'm saying right now. Hey, and, and, and I'm getting, I'm trying to, just bear with me. I'll get to this. I remember reading in Mark where there was a man who was there and he, Jesus was coming toward him and there was a multitude of people there and he began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You know, that thought hit me. The three things Jesus told them to preach about that, they, that were the weightiest of all of the world. What of them was mercy. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You see, we need to tell people that God is merciful. We need to get them to understand that God's mercy extends throughout all of eternity for Amen. us if we will only accept it. Amen. But, oh, we won't because we don't need it right now. You see, when do you need mercy? I need it every day. I needed it when I was lost. I just didn't know it. But when I come to the point of Brother Jeff where I knew it, I needed to do something about it. And I needed to call out to God. You know what? I've said this all along. You can preach to your lungs are off. You can teach the Word of God in the absolute truth and the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And if you aren't in trouble in your life, you won't hear a word of that that means anything to you. Exactly. Until you, you become right. unhappy where you are That's in good. your life, you will never change. Good, this man had got to the point where he had all he could take. And he said, Jesus, have mercy on me. Yeah. Now, I wish I could tell you that that door of mercy will stay open forever. Yeah. No, it won't. No, it won't. Someday, right. it will close yeah. to everyone. But someday it may remain open to others and close to you. Right. You will reach a point in your life where you have stepped beyond God's mercy. Yeah. You will reach a point where God cannot reach you right. with anything yeah. and the Holy Spirit will never come by your door yeah. again yeah. and knock right. in your heart's door. That's, right. That's scary. Because yeah. when mercy is gone, then we have judgment to Christ. And I can't preach you mercy without preaching judgment. Because you've got to know that judgment is coming. If you live your life any way you want to, then you're going to lose out on the greatest things that there is. Oh, I, I, I'm young. I'm not going to die. Hey boy, tell me how I managed to preach 83 funeral services one year of young people, people much younger than me, some of them uh, just eight to nine years old. I didn't worry about them. They, I don't believe they'd ever reached the, uh, the uh, age of accountability. But I preached some that in 20 and 30 year olds that I know knew better. Yeah, right. Boy, isn't that awful. It would break my heart. I would stand and cry because I knew that they were beyond right. the reach of God's hand. They had stepped one day too far right. without God. I may have told you this story. There was a young man that I'd witnessed to and preached to. He would come to church and he would bob and he would get up and leave. Not coming to the altar. And he loved to drink. Loved to party. And he was out late one night partying and 
I guess it kind of got to bother him. He thought, you know, I've been to church so many times, and I, I'm ignoring what my family has asked for me. And I, I think what I'll do is when I get home, I, I'll just tell my wife to lay out my suit, and I'll, I'll go to church with her. And about 1 o'clock that night, death found him. Hadn't made any, as far as I know, made any attempt to be saved. Oh, he had good intentions. He was going to go to church the next morning. He didn't make it. He made it for the Sunday night service. All decked out in his suit. He couldn't hear a word because of death and family. That's a scary thought, isn't it? Yes, it is. To know that you step into eternity without having God in your life. Amen. Having no hope of ever being in a state of that fiery torpedo yeah. You read the rich man who died and then hell into his eyes. And he was in torment. Yeah. And he begged them to send Lazarus back. The, 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 the beggar that had died. But he had died knowing the Lord. He said, send him back to preach to my brothers that are still alive. Yeah. Yes. I don't want them to come to this right. place. It's too late to be evangelistic, isn't it? can't even do anything for yourself. And they told him, he said, it wouldn't do any good. If I sent one back, sent up a prophet, so they would listen. And even if I sent one back that it rose from the dead, they wouldn't listen to them. And that holds true today. He sent Jesus who got up out of the grave. And Sister Alice was singing about it. Three days. I love that song where the child is singing. In three days he got up. And, 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 he, and God sent him to us. And yet, people say, I don't believe that. How can people rise again? Well, then, we go to the third point. Faith. He said, you know, you've done all these things, but you left out judgment. You left out mercy. And you left out faith. Isn't that awful? I mean, how, how can they... Uh, how can you believe on whom you have not heard? That's right. right. And how can you uh, uh, hear without a preacher? That's right. And how can he preach except he be seen? Or could we say except he went to school so they taught him? No. <laughs> now listen, don't get, I, I'm not thinking, I do know of one man that I think about and I'll never use his name because it's, I, I can't do that. I'm not going to allow it. But I did hear a preacher. And he said one time, he said, why? I don't need to study. He said, I can get on my computer in 30 minutes. I can have five messages. Well, maybe you can. I, I'm not going to say you can. But, man, i got to keep my nose in the book. i got to read. i got to get somewhere uh, where I know that God can speak to hearts by His Word, not by what little bit of intelligence I have. Listen, you could put my brain in a hummingbird and it would starve to death right in front of the place to eat. It wouldn't have enough sense to eat. I don't have any common sense, I guess. But, and I certainly don't know God's Word enough to get out and, and, and claim, oh, I, I'm this good at that. I want you to understand something. Judgment is coming. Mercy is open. But in order to find that and escape judgment, you've got to have faith. And I, I, I've been up here too long. I want to come to, to something else. And you know, and, and that story I was telling you about where the people were, they cried out, be quiet. Don't bother Jesus. I want you to understand something. You're not bothering Jesus with your problems. He's longing to answer your prayers. He's longing to let you escape the judgment of hell. He's he loved you so much that he sent his only son. I couldn't do that. If you took my son, I'm sorry, you die lost. I just don't have that kind of heart. But God did. I don't understand how. And he sent him to die for people who didn't even care. For people like me and you. I'm glad God kept that door of mercy open for me. But I want you know Jesus spoke more about hell than he did anything else. He did. And he talked about judgment. Yeah. You know, the, the scripture tells us in Deuteronomy 1, uh, 
uh, 117 that uh, judgment is God's. You don't stand before the pastor or the preacher or the deacon or the elder or your husband or your wife. You're going to stand before God. And, and, and he also said in Isaiah 27, 17, or 28, 17, I'm sorry, he said this, that I will lay judgment to the lion. Isn't that scary? I worked my entire life in engineering. I started out as a young man, and you took that old, uh, them old-fashioned tripods out, and you put a level on top of it, and you put a plumb bob in it, and, and you begin to level that thing, and, and you get it set to that bubble was right in the center. You couldn't be off in it. Oh, you could if you were only going maybe 100 feet. But when you go to going 1,000 or 2,000 feet, if you're off a half inch here, you'll be off 10 feet at the end of the line. That's what the Pharisees did. They started out and they started getting a little bit off. And God sent them the prophets to tell them and they kept going. They didn't care. But you know what he said there in Isaiah? He also said that I'm going to lay it to the line and he said I'm going to put the plumb ball right there. And when we would drive that stake in the ground you had about maybe two inches. And inside that stake when you would shoot that straight line or whatever you were working on, they had that plumb bob up there and it hung down with a little tip. And you put that nail right there with a little bitty groove in it. And that plumb bob held right over there. And if it wasn't centered, you had to shoot it again. You had to, you had to get it perfect. This is the friend. We need to get this thing perfect. We need to get the word out perfect. Oh, it's okay to tell uh, uh, wives and husbands how to live according to God's Word. But we don't need some book from some man who's made it his uh, a millionaire writing a book to tell you how right. to treat each other. Right. God's Word tells us how to do that. And I didn't have to pay much for my Bible. Most of them, somebody gave me. Because, you know, they, they were appreciative of the Word and they right. put my name on it and gave it to you. I love them. This is what else he said. In John chapter 9, verse 39, he said, I came for judgment. He came to judge me. Not by him, but by his word. Yeah. The Bible says in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was with God, and we beheld him as, as the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. Amen. And then he said, in, in uh, uh, Romans 14, 10, he said this. He said that uh, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the deeds done in the body. We don't like to talk about judgment. I'd rather hear about mercy. I'd rather hear about faith. Judgment scares me. I hope it does. A man told me one time, he said, you can't preach uh, uh, fear in the people. I said, no. But you can preach the word of God and he can put the fear in there. And if he puts fear in you, your fear of dying, your fear of standing before God, then you understand what mercy means. You don't understand mercy until you understand judgment. When you begin to understand judgment, you will understand mercy. And then he went on to say that in Hebrews 9 27, we all probably know it now. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. Hey. And then he said this, First Peter 4, 17. He spoke to the church. You know what he told us about judgment? Judgment begins at the house of God. Hey. He's not talking about this church house. He's talking about this this body is a temple that needs to exhibit and live according to the Word of God and speak the Word of God and teach the Word of God and live the Word of God. Amen. The greatest message a man will ever preach will be the one he lives. Amen. Now, I'm coming to a close, and I promise you with this thought. The Bible tells us in Genesis, that God looked down on the earth and that the entire earth had become corrupt. 
and the thoughts of every man's heart was continually evil. And he said, I'm going to destroy the earth. And all the dwellings, I think he had plans to start off. But you know what? He looked down and he said that he found a man that found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Grace includes mercy, Amen. faith, living according to the Word. And he saw him and he said, Okay, no. I want you to preach, but I want you to be on the road. I want you to preach, but I want you to get ready for judgment. Amen. I want you to preach mercy. That the ark door is open and tell them about judgment coming. And they can come in. And it costs them nothing. Right. But also, they need to have faith to understand that judgment is coming. And they need to have faith in the ark. They need to have faith in the man that built the ark. Right. Now, we climb on planes. I don't know who built the thing. And I tell you what, it's scary. Any brother Hurst get in a helicopter? You got a blade up here going and a blade back here going, and if any one of them don't work right, you know where you're going? Down. I climbed in one more time and I had been in I'd been in an airplane, I hadn't been in a helicopter, and I asked the pilot, I said, what happens if the engine goes out on this thing? He said, I'll show you. I said, no, 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 no. I don't want to know that man. I do not want to know. I'll take your word for what happened. But you see, I had fear of Christ. And I had fear of judgment. I want you to understand something. When that day came, God said, it's time. It's going to be. And he sent him into the ark. And he said, I will shut the door, being God. He was pitched within and without. And there was no way for Noah to close that door God had to do. I consider that door the door of mercy. And it, it closed that day. And you know what? What I thought about all of the children out there. Children that died in the flood. Thank you. 